Hello everyone, I'm just uh, creating a video here because I want to, I just, I'm able to get uh, Coral Linux, a uh, very old Linux, running in a, running in Docker, so I just wanted to kind of show this off and uh, make a quick video to explain how this is done and where you can get it. So, as you can see on the screen right now, this is the Docker file, so I created this myself here, Coral Latest. This file is, um, is generated based from a tarball that I generated. So I generated a tarball of the entire file, the entire Core Linux file system. And then I have this locally. And then what I end up doing is we add user. We call the user Docker, user, user Docker. We're, we change the working directory. And we have to set some path stuff up for Core Linux works. We have, I set this just in case, you never know. And then this is the display for the Docker host machine. This can be changed via Users can easily change this if they want. They can also change these things, I guess, as well. But yeah, some, some, some configuration stuff. Entry point, of course, and then the command line to start KDE. So, um, and here I have an X server ready to go. So this X server here is just uh, ready to go here. So this is the one we're going to boot it into. So I'm going to go over here. And you're going to see how this is working. So let's go here. So I just push this over. Actually, I'll bring this over too for you guys want, if you guys want to find out where this is. So I'm going to bring this over for a second as well here. So here's the Docker website here. So if you go to my page, Cabrano Vintage, and you can go to the tags, and you'll notice there's, a, there's Coral KDE. There's also the Caldera one here. So far, people have actually pulled Caldera eight times out of curiosity. It doesn't have much. This Caldera image is purely just... Um, is purely just, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, is just the network services, there's nothing else in there. But this one here is, oops, sorry, but this one, but the first one here, this Coral Linux is, gonna, is the more interesting one. So just do a doc, so just do a, as you can see here, just do a docker pull key around a vintage cor colon Coral KDE. It'll take a while, it's a 310 megabyte image, but at that, but after that point, you will have a Coral you will have a uh, Coral Linux image ready to go. So let's try running it here. So we're going to do Asma Docker push. So we're going to do a we're going to do a run. So yeah, all you have to do is just because I have it I have it tagged locally as Coral KDE. So just run it like this. It you know, I don't think you need it, but I'm putting that just in case. So you probably don't need it because it doesn't really need the terminal at all. So it doesn't need to be interactive or anything. Actually, let me just remove that. Let's see what happens. Let's just remove the IT. Because that gets removed ready anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and then this should be able to run it. You might need to set the environment as well, too, to be the... Uh, your. That the, the tricky part about that is that you have to know the network you're running it in. If you're running it in the default, if you're in the default Docker network, like running it just like this, uh, the IP address should be correct. So you should just be able to just press hit enter here. And in the background here, you should see Coral Linux boot up load up through Docker. And it runs really fast because, well, it's using your host Linux processor, right? Host Linux uh, kernel, I mean. So yeah, so you have a full Docker image. You even have full Netscape in here as well. So you can actually explore your Docker stuff with, like you're inside your Docker image with Netscape if you really want to, like connect to internal applications. But there's really no point. It's just kind of, it doesn't even, you can't, I don't think you can really connect anywhere it's because no website really, I can't think of any HTTP websites. Any, oh, actually, I don't want I, I thought of one just now. <laughs> I don't have HTTPS on this one because it's my, it's, one, it's my Python blog. I feel like everything is HTTPS. So yeah, it works. You can, you can browse the net. Of course, you're going to get all these. You're going to get this error popping up because it can't find home6.netscape.com. So yeah, and this is this site, is my blog probably won't render properly in here because, well, yeah, Netscape is so, so old. Yeah, look at the help. Look at how everything just doesn't render. It renders only a couple things, and that's it. It's kind of hilarious. So let's go to about communicator here and see what version we have. It actually, <laughs> communicator uh, seven. Oh, it doesn't even open any window. It just you expect you to go back to your previous page this way. That's kind of funny. So, but yeah. So and it does it does come with uh, quite a few different things installed. So if you go to the, uh, the I think there's a pa is there a package manager in Coral? There should be. Web tools. I don't know what that is. That could be used lots. There's actually quite a few, um, quite a few things in here. So, curl update, smart move. I have a feeling. I have a feeling that it might be this. Let's see what happens. Because this is based off the uh, Debian Slink instance. So, 
Yeah, it might not work. Oh yeah, and if you need root, you can open the shell up here. And you actually can get root pretty easily. It should work. Huh, strange. It didn't do anything. Didn't give me any errors either, so let's try it again. See what happens. I should be able to get it. I've never actually tried the terminal in the QMU image either, so maybe it doesn't work, which it should. I don't see why it wouldn't. Um, <clears throat> cause I know, oh, I know there's X term. So if you go to application, go to Debian, you should be able to get a um, an X term at least. Yeah, an X term works. Okay, so X term works. So then you can type in su dash, and you can get it, and there's no password. You can get a full root shell. So, and then you can type in this. Uh, Oh no, uh, get, just do a uh, get selections, and then you should be able to use less, and then you can see all the packages. So it comes with a few different games and things installed as well, like a bunch of stuff, Coral Boot Splash, and a bunch of other interesting stuff. So if you, so if you want to, do, to explore and see what Coral Linux ships with, you can. Oh, it comes with Apache as well, it's kind of neat. I wonder what's in the local Apache server now. It comes with a lot, like it even comes with... Um, Oh yeah, I forgot. It even comes with that too. Let me see if it actually runs. It comes with like Lin City, but Lin City doesn't actually pop up in here though, which is weird. I don't know why. But Lin City you can get to from here, and you can go to simulation, and then Lin City. Let's see if it runs. Oh, it does. Oh god, <laughs> it runs in Docker. You can run Lin City in Docker now. An old version of Lin City can run in Docker. That's actually kind of that's actually kind of cool. Neat. See home docker Lin City. Uh, create the directory. Pottery farm market. This isn't really a city. It's more like um, I don't know. <laughs> Load with built-in save game. Start new random village. So it's more of a village. It's not really a city. It's more of a village simulator, I guess. Start with a bare board. Let's start with a random city just to see how it looks. Interesting. Yeah. Well. I never actually played Lin City. Thinking about it now, so yeah, Lin City is pre-installed in here. If you're if you really want to take a look at that, there's a few other interesting games too. So if you go into app, if you go, oh yeah, you, oh yeah, the version of KD. If you go to Control Center, everything generally works. So you can see here, so you can see everything is generally works, and you can also change the wallpaper too. Like there's actually a few cool wallpapers you can get. So there's actually Coral. Oh, there's actually a few interesting ones like Coral Linux one here. You can see. So if you minimize these, minimize that, so you can kind of see. So. And it's all running in Docker, so which is so which is really really cool, yeah. So yeah, it's neat. So what else is in here? Oh yeah, it comes with Apache. I want to, actually want to start in the local Apache server and see what happens. Uh, oh yeah, it has GIMP. Let's see, let's see how old the version of GIMP is. Install, continue. Oh, this is old. Close. I wonder if this version of GIMP is. Because I, I had troubles using the GIMP in the other. Oh, it actually works here. Okay, cool. I couldn't. I had troubles using GIMP inside of uh, Caldera for some reason. I don't know why. Oh, and you also have, you also have um, Coral. You also have uh, Coral Photo Paint Nine as well. And I don't know what Coral City is, but yeah, you have Coral Paint in here as well. <laughs> No running font service detected. Trying to start a font server on this host. Unable to add Fantastic font server to font path. The font server is probably not installed or not running. Uh, connect, yeah. So you can say you can technically export the font using port to run. If you actually wanted to run that, you probably could. So you have to start the font server. So just go etsy int.d, go x. You have to do an xfs, and you can start the font server. So now the font server started. And if you do now, if we do a net stat dash nt and um, uh, NTL, oh, L is not an option, NT, I guess, okay, and, oh, no, I can't do listen, what, there's no listen in this version, huh, okay, so it's not showing the listening servers, because N, NT, TCP, okay, let's go N, A, Hey, there we go. Yeah, so the font server is now listening. So what you can do is you could restart the X server, and then you can set the X font path to point to the Docker image, and then you should be able to, um, and you should be able to 
be able to use the fonts if you wanted to, and then run the, those kind of, run those kind of programs like Coral Paint, Coral Photo Paint Nine, and things like that. So, but Word Perfect I think should work no problem. I think it should. Yeah, yeah, it should work no problem. I think I I got this to work through X, through the X thing, no problem. So. Of course, it's running through Docker, so you're going to get like native speed. You don't have to. You don't have to worry about uh, any kind of weirdness, right? Oh, right. I got to check. I got to check something here too. Um, oh yeah, I got. I got enough. Okay, good. Wasn't sure. Um, yeah, it's taken a while to load Word Perfect eight. I don't know why. It's kind of strange. It's very well possible that they might have. That they might have during the install of, of this Linux, they might have had some. They have, might have some weird DRM in place, and since it since it's running through Docker instead of running in a native image, it could be cause that could be causing some issues. That's my guess on why some things aren't working correctly. Let's take a look at the at the internal Apache though. I'm really curious on. Oh, it failed. Wonder why it failed. Um. Mm. Term shutting down, having picker resuming number operations, cut sig term shutting down. Huh, I don't know. It's strange. I can't use the home button in this, in this terminal, which is weird. Let's go 200. Yeah, strange. Hmm. Yeah, it says configured, resuming normal, uh, configured, resuming normal operations, and then it caught SIG term for some reason. Hmm. Mm. Okay, so Apache start. Okay, let's try that. So Apache control start. Um, HTTP. D cannot determine local host name. Use the server name directive to set it manually. Uh, okay, there we go. So that's the error. I don't know why that didn't put in the error log. So let's do that. Apache HTTP D config. Oh. Oh, but I, but I think I can use. I think I can use kwrite. Because I think we. No. So I think if I. I think if I just do an s. You, yeah, that's how I can do it. Okay, so I can run root stuff this way. Okay, so now, so server name, server name, there it is. Okay, so server name, localhost, save it. Okay, since I, I want to have a proper root shell when I start something. <laughs> there, it started. Okay, and then now if we do net stat MTA, I should have 80. Now I can open up Netscape, and I should be able to see what's running there. I'm really curious, actually, what they have, what, what they run, because every Linux, every old Linux distribution automatically installs a local home hour space. So it doesn't really ins give you too much. Because I know the other distro will give you quite a bit. Interesting. Anyways, so yeah, that is um, the Coral image running through there. And then as soon as you log out, it actually does terminate everything. So to log out, um, okay, boom. And, the, and you can see the Docker image uh, properly stopped. So yeah. So if you want to run an X server in uh, on your Linux uh, to do this, just um, just run this here. So you go X nest colon one, and then your geometry, 
and then disable access control and then listen on TCP. And yeah, then you're good to go. You can actually uh, be able to start it up with just that command. Just go docker run uh, kbrano slash uh, vintage colon coral kde and boom. You, net, you then have, you're then good to go. <laughs> And you can have, and you can play around with Coral, uh, the Coral KDE Linux. Anyways, that's the video. That's my video for today. Um, I'll see you guys in the next one.